Um, it, it's sort of this, I, I find it kind of perplexing, I guess, in sorts, because this is usually the time of the year where everybody's trying to work out their budget for next year, and that's why this talents and it, 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 the, the, the gospel reading is very uh, put here for a reason so that churches can start saying to people, you know, it's that normal sermon about how much you're going to give, and, you know, God gives you this, are you giving it back, and, and, and I'm not going to go there, because we're given this rare opportunity, like I said, to talk through, it's the only time in, in the lectionary why they decided this, uh, that we talk about the book of Judges. And the book of Judges is this phenomenal book uh, that talks and reeks and eeks and just spews out salvation history. It, it, it's about that time. Now, when this is, this is a story <coughs> that happens after the people come into Israel, oh, into Israel out of Egypt, okay? They come into Israel out of Egypt. And in this time, they have judges put before them. And, and, and so that's why it, it, it's so fundamental for where we are. Because remember, if you keep reading the story, it goes into Samuel and it goes into Kings. And, and the people scream, what? We want to be like everybody else. We want a king. God says, no, nah, uh, judges is all you need. I, I, we, we want a king. Okay, but you're not going to like what you get. And they pick Samuel and, or Saul instead of uh, um, David, who God really picked. So this Sunday, we only get seven lines out of this great reading, out of this great book. And we only get to really taste, to sip from this, this huge book, uh, the book of Judges. And I don't know why. They only give us seven verses. And, and, and it only happens once every three years. This Sunday, every three years, you get to sip into Judges. And um, I don't know why. I, I wonder sometimes is when the folks were putting the lectionary together, if they're frightened of Judges. Because Judges has a lot of bloodshed. You have the great story of Gideon and the slaves and how they overthrew in the book of Judges, there's a lot of cruelty from man on man and a lot of wars and, and, and violence is going on. Um, so I, I'm not sure if, if, they, if they figured, well, we'll just give them these seven lines and, and that won't exceed the, the recommended dosage of violence that we're allowed in church. You know, I don't know. I don't know. But we as a church, we need to break into this medicine cabinet of Judges and to sneak a swig of this book of sorts. If you haven't read the book of Judges, sit and read the book of Judges. It's phenomenal. It's, it's probably one of the, the better books in the Bible in talking about how this redemptive story that we'll talk about keeps coming out. We have two characters in there, uh, 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 Samson and Delilah, uh, Gideon. I mean, these, these are great people of the Old Testament. Now, Granted, I, I, I'm sorry, Brett, I, I didn't mean to do it on purpose that we, we gave you all the uh, big titles and so forth, you know, because there's a lot of stuff in there that you can't, uh, you just don't understand the word usage or, or where they're going at uh, because it's names of cities that are no longer there, and, et cetera. But it, it's, it's a phenomenal book. It really is. So break out the book of Judges this week. Um, Deborah, who we, we read here, first off is, is, this is the only text from the book of Judges. We get out to that. The second part is Deborah is the only one of the judges who is a woman. Who is a woman. Uh, though she apparently multitasks, as most of you women do. Um, this week I was joking around with one of the women in class. She was asked to multitask while playing cards. And I said, you're not a mother yet, are you? And she goes, no. I said, I can see. Because most mothers can you know, change a diaper while they're talking to another child at the same time, and they're multitasking. Here's a woman who, who definitely multitasked, because we know if we read on a little bit in 4.4 that she was a prophetess, but she was also a wife. She, if we lead, read into chapter 5 of the book of Judges, we see the Song of Deborah, which we use on certain Sundays. Beautiful poetry. We know this to be one of the earliest known poems in the Bible. Except for the book of, of Job. That is the oldest. Deborah is one of the older ones. It's recognized as, as one of those. 
And finally, the other judges and their families, as well as successes, you have Gideon. Gideon was not all that great. He tended toward idolatry, right? As we read the story, he, he, he dabbled in it. Samson, what was Samson's big failing? It was a womanizer. This to us gives us comfort to see that God picks the imperfect for his perfection. If we say to ourselves, well, I'm not good enough to be, you know, to, you're full of it. That, that's Satan talking. God calls the imperfect for his perfection. So Deborah is, is really so beautifully done. She's known as the mother of Israel. Matter of fact, when you see coinage from the Roman Empire, when they had taken the coins, the metal from uh, when the, the Romans overthrew uh, the Israelites, after Christ our Lord had died and rose again. On their coinage, they have Deborah, the, 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 the Judean woman under the palm tree. That is their idol of, uh, or icon for Israel, is Deborah sitting under the palm tree giving judgment, just like in our book here today. And, and that's what they put on the coinage. So it's a historical fact Again, as scripture unfolds, we see that it's a historical book. So the book of Judges is this collection of stories of Israel's history. Now this starts between 1200 and 1050 BC. These tales were told in families, were told in clans, they were told in villages, they were told in towns, and the rest of the areas on trails. And then finally the stories were incorporated into this long historic book and, and it's 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 a deuteronomical historic work running from deuteronomy to second kings that's what judges is now, now again that's excluding the book of ruth because ruth is is off on her own a little bit but it's all during this time of the capital of the babylonian captivity that this book is put together <coughs> now our story in Judges is fitting into a four-part pattern. And you're going to see this four-part pattern again and again and again and again, not just then in Scripture, but in our lives. Part one, tell me if this sounds familiar. The people forsake their God, Judges 3, 7. Number two, the Lord allows enemies to attack them, 3, 8. Three, the people cry out to the Lord for help, 3, 9. 4, the Lord sends a judge to deliver them and bring things back to normal, peaceful situation. Judges 3, 9 through 10. Do you see this in your life? I turn away from the Lord. I cry to the Lord. He sends my helper. Things are back to normal. It's our repetitive salvation. It's our repetitiveness that happens all the time. We could imagine the situation for the stories about judges in, in, in a historical context. The people are in exile. They need to understand that God has not forsaken them. But they have forsaken God. That's our story. That's not just Israel's story. That's our story. Our sinfulness constantly turns our way away from God. We talked about this in our discussion about our, 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 how our works are in, in the uh, 39 Articles. We constantly turn away. We also need to hear the message of God's continuing love. These stories tell the exiles to pray, and their loving God will hear their prayers and send another deliverer. Isn't that what we do? God has done this before, and we can see this in each story of Judges as you read the story. It seems like it's, guys, haven't you heard this once before? Yeah, okay, and then they finally get it. It doesn't seem to sink in and that they learn. They keep allowing the same thing to happen over and over again. Judges 4, 1 through 7, the reading we should be understood in context of the material about Deborah in Judges 4 and 5. The geographical setting for the story is easily located. Hazor is a city in the North Sea of, of the Sea of Galilee, as we call it in the New Testament. The location is Herosheth. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Brent, for getting that right. The Hagoin, 
which has not been identified. Bethel, where Deborah lived, is about 20 miles north of Jerusalem in the hill called Ephraim. Mount Talbot is just southwest of the Sea of Galilee. The editor who put the, the Deborah material together begins the fitting story into this four-part framework that, that this has in this historical context. After the death, the Lord responds, the Israelites cry, and, and, and Deborah gives pronouncement, and then they see a time of peace. Again, you see how this circle happens all the time. We meet Deborah. She is an amazing woman. And, and she is a woman who is in charge of judging within Israel. These stories remind us that those hands carrying out the work of the mighty and merciful God are a woman's hands too. And too often in our denominations we have certain jobs that have been cast out to be men only and women only. We need to watch that in God's context. What is God calling us for? Now, in no way am I saying anything about the priest or the deacon and who should be a male or female. I'm not getting into that argument because that's arguing about angels on a pinhead. But there are certain discussions here we need to be mindful of in how God placed in the timing that would allow genders to do certain things. That's important to understand is that God would not allow, in a time when men ruled the world, a woman to be in a certain position if he didn't think that salvation history was going to be seen through that woman. And it was. And it was. So it's important to understand that women in context of the scripture are vital in the most important part. That the old days of men running the whole show is stupid and crazy. I know, that's me speaking. I'm sure I'll get a phone call from the bishop about that. But we need to be mindful. We need to be mindful of who God calls and why. That our biases don't get in the way when it comes to genders in certain church positions. We need to be very mindful of that. Yes, the status quo had it set up a certain way. But is that our story or is that God's story? We need to remind ourselves that in different times, mankind has had different roles in society for different genders. It took a woman like Deborah in the book of Judges to remind us of that timeless story, the reason our Lord God sent his son Jesus to propitiate us. Look, like in Deborah's time, I need you to look this week at your own life. Look at that clock. When the hand is at noon, you're going to forsake God. You're going to. When it's at three, the Lord will allow Satan to attack us. When it hits six, we're going to cry out for help for the Lord. When it hits nine, the Lord will send a judge who is Jesus Christ, and he will deliver us. He is that pure judge. He will deliver us from all things. And when it gets back to noon, Everything's back back in normal. If we allow this repetition to know that every time that clock gets to three o'clock, we need to scream out to our Lord Jesus Christ for his help. Not to ourselves. The world wants us to scream to ourselves. But we need to scream out that the Lord Jesus Christ save us for our sinfulness when we repent and so that we can come back sooner and maybe not make that same mistake again. So this week, as you do our daily confessional, I need you to remember Deborah, if you could this week as you do your confession. As she pointed out to us the cross, the reason for the cross at Calvary, the judges show us that perfect timing that God has and to remind us that it is the cross that we need for our Redeemer and not our worldly and, and earthly things. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.